Well, I have a little something different for you guys tonight. I normally talk about my RC cars, which are in storage up here. Got my uh, Ultima, my Raider, and my Big Brute. But I've been working on this RC plane now for some time. When I was a teen, uh, I got this plane, and my dad and I spent a lot of time putting it together. It was uh, definitely an educational experience. Huge time dump. But unfortunately, the uh, K&B 45 Sportster motor I had in it was real finicky and uh, didn't get to fly it much. It was stalling a lot and nobody could really figure out why. So it ended up sitting. I didn't even get a gallon of fuel through it, which was uh, really a shame. And then I went to college and just, you know, got busy with things and it's been in storage ever since. And now and then I'd look up at it and think to myself, yeah, I really want to get this plane out, but I just didn't have the time and the, um, the motor was, the gas uh, K&V motor was just so finicky that, you know, I was kind of turned off by it. So long story short, when I converted my Ultima to brushless, I was reading up on, you know, just how powerful these setups can be and it was more than enough to power the plane. So I went full OCD and researched like crazy uh, over the past few months and took a lot of time to figure out exactly how to do this conversion. But I ended up going with a LiPo conversion and a brushless motor. Um, overall, the hardest part was simply researching things and uh, getting the center of gravity right because the, uh, the K&B motor was pretty heavy. It was a 45 Sportster, which is bigger than what this plane was supposed to take. This plane was only rated to take a uh, 25 to a um, 40. So the 45 is a little bigger. And because of that, the cow would never clear the motor that I had in there before. Uh, and I'll get into that a little later. But uh, it actually flew pretty well and the center of gravity was just nose heavy enough with that oversized motor that I don't know how you could ever go with a motor on the smaller end of the range that they recommend. Um, but if you add up the throttle server that came out and the four cells for the receiver, the um, mount for the motor, the fuel, the fuel tank and everything, uh, without the fuel in the tank, it was about 24 ounces of weight I took out of the plane and it would be more like 32 ounces uh, with fuel in it. So quite a bit of weight there. With the brushless setup, the LiPo is 13 ounces. I have a 5200 milliamp hour uh, battery here that I put in the plane. I figured I needed to go pretty heavy. And I have it mounted up against the firewall to get as much weight in the nose where the plane really needs it. Um, so that's where most of the weight is with the brushless setup. But then the motor is about five and a half ounces. And you know some other things bring the grand total up to about uh, 22 ounces, but then I had to add a lot of weight, which was really upsetting. And I put it in the cow, uh, between the cow, which I didn't run before and the six ounces of weight, uh, it was a little over seven ounces of total weight that I had to put in this plane to get the center of gravity in the range that it needs to be. They recommend, I think it's about two fifths of an inch to three and a quarter inches back from the, uh, the front of the wing here. And uh, I got it to about three inches, which is where it was with the 45 glow engine. Um, so, you know, certainly recommends that you could go even heavier on the nose, but I just, it was killing me to add weight to the plane because, you know, there's so many negatives to go along with that. It's not gonna have as slow a stall speed. It's gonna, you know, not be as efficient. It's just uh, not, not good all around. So there, there was a small weight savings in the end with the switch to, to brushless because of all the extra weight I had to dump in the cow. And, uh, you know, so this setup is, compared to the fully loaded, fully fueled SIG Cadet Mark II, which I, maybe I failed to mention, that's the uh, type of plane this is. You know, we're only talking a weight savings of about five or six ounces, which is something. But then you figure that's with a full tank, so maybe on average you have half a tank of fuel. So really the weight saving isn't much, but at least it's not any heavier than it once was. To get that uh, center of gravity within the range that they recommend, 
I actually use tire weights and uh, I forgot to get a good picture of them or uh, get a good way to show you guys where they are. They're hard to see, but they're down there in the bottom of the cow. And uh, yeah, I can't show you. But just take my word, I epoxied them in there with some JB Weld. Some people recommend not putting weight in the cow, but I don't see uh, the problem. I mean, I epoxied the heck out of it. First, I sanded it down to make the surface, uh, you know, so it can grip, the epoxy could grip it better. But uh, I think it's in there pretty good. And if it does come loose, it's not going to be able to find its way out of the cowling. So it's not going to be catastrophic. And then I um, haven't pretty things up yet, but I just have five screws right now holding the cowl to the plane. Epoxy those in real good, and I, I think it'll be uh, good enough. The sketchy paint job on this plane, um, I did that because I remember when I was a teen, it was really hard to see. Uh, when it was up in the air, the black, I love the way red and black look together, but it wasn't the best choice for a plane. It would it would get really difficult to, um, in certain uh, directions when it was flying, it was really tough to see what it was doing sometimes, and it was confusing, which is a little scary. So I just took some spray paint and threw it on there. Uh, so that's what the yellow is, but the yellow should be a lot more visible. I still plan on maybe adding some white to the top of the wings or something. Uh, but for now, I think it's good enough to get a, a test flight. I'm really eager to fly this and I might actually get it out tomorrow morning. And that's why I'm taking this video because I did my best to get the center of gravity right. You know, I trimmed everything up uh, the best I can. You know, I'm pretty good with RC cars. I've done some flight simulators. I have a really good understanding of flight and uh, how to take off and land and stall speeds and all those different things. But the reality is I have no idea how this is going to go tomorrow. And it would really stink if I, uh, I crushed this plane, if I folded it up into the ground. But we'll see. It's a risk. And uh, I tell myself it's, at least it would be an honorable death because just sitting in storage forever is not doing it any good either. So uh, what else? The um, brushless setup I have here, it's identical to the Ternigi. 34, oh, I'm going to forget the number. It's like 3458. I'll put a link to the, in the description as to the exact motor. I think the Ternigi version has been discontinued, but on Amazon they sell it under the name of DYS 3548. Again, I think that's right. Yes, yeah, 3548. And uh, it seems like the exact size that I need for this plane. I'm only going to run it on 3S. Certainly with 4S it would have more power. But with an 11 by 7 prop, uh, it's going to make about 500 watts of power. Now, I'm waiting on tires to come from China that are taller. This one up here is only 2.5 inches as the RC store that I bought this from back in the 90s. They didn't have any single 2.75 tires. So it's a little smaller than ideal. And uh, with a 10 inch prop, which is what I have on here now, there's enough clearance. This is a 10 by 7 However, it only makes around 400 watts with this propeller, so should be enough. Um, but, you know, I do want to get the 11 by 7 prop on there, and I actually have three of them that I purchased, but I'm afraid taking off on grass is just not going to offer the clearance I need, and it's, it's a little too risky. And again, I think the 400 watts of power should be sufficient. Now, with this same brushless motor, uh, it would make closer to 700 watts without going, you know, too, too crazy, uh, with, with the amp draw with, um, on 4S with a, with the same prop. I'm sorry, not with the same prop. I can't remember. I'll put a link in the description. I've, there's a Cobra motor, which, uh, has a lot of prop info on it. And it's almost identical to this for what I could tell comparing people's reviews of this motor versus, uh, what they have in their specs. So I use that to really dial in the type of prop that I wanted. I'm also considering doing a, um, a three-bladed prop, uh, a 10 by seven. Uh, the, the power number should be just about identical to the 11 by seven two-bladed prop, but they're kind of expensive at $10 and I wasn't sure 
just starting out, but it would be a good idea if I was to break $10 profit, I'd be kind of annoyed. So here we are um, tomorrow when I hopefully get a chance to try to fly this. I'm going to just run this 10 by 7 again, about 400 watts of power, which should be sufficient. Although this plane is heavier than I thought. All the books for SIG say it should be about five pounds, but mine's every bit of five and a half or a little bit more how it's set up now. I should have weighed it before I took the uh, glow engine out of here, but I didn't. So I'm jumping around a little bit. Hopefully um, this is coherent, but I'll just show you the setup in here. And uh, hopefully if some of you guys are looking to do a conversion of your own, this is you know, helpful. So in the manual, it told you that you need to be three and a half inches out from the firewall to get the clearance for the cow. So I have that, it actually came out really good. Uh, again, I used four bolts. I used um, six by 32 bolts and uh, it gave me my spacing, which is nice. And then inside I took the throttle servo out, which was of course here. I remounted the old school receiver back there away from possible sources of interference. So I made a battery tray here that took way longer than I'd like to admit it to get it to fit just right because what would happen is the battery was hitting the bolts that hold the, the motor in place. Uh, so I had to get it just the right level to make it fit and I know I'm not getting a good shot of it in there. But if anybody's interested, let me know and I can send you some pictures or uh, whatever. So the speed controller, I went smaller than they recommend for the ESC. It's only a 50 amp. However, looking at these prop charts at full throttle, even with the 11 by 7 prop, it should only be drawing about 45 amps. So even a little wiggle room in there, I should be all right. I did cut some extra... I enlarged the hole in the cow to get some airflow, and I enlarged the hole where the control rod for the um, elevator is. And uh, battery's low on my cell phone, that's why I just got distracted. And uh, so that should provide enough airflow, I think, to keep things cool. They recommend a 70 amp ESC, but Again, I think this 50 will be enough, and I was trying to keep things cheap, just not knowing how well my setup's going to work. You know, is that vintage Aerotronics six-channel Vanguard receiver going to do its thing? Is it going to... Is my plane going to get lost? You know, I don't know. I hope not. But, so, the engine, or I'm sorry, the motor I got on Amazon was $25. The speed controller was 17 The battery was 22 I don't think it's going to hold a 5200. I'll let you guys know what I get when I charge it. I'm thinking maybe closer to low 4000s, but still, that, that's sufficient. I didn't mind the, the weight of the bulky battery. Uh, it was 370 grams, or I think that was, again, about 13, maybe 13 and a half ounces. And uh, when it goes in there, it sits right up against the firewall. I guess I can kind of slide it in here and show you guys. And I uh, put a little Velcro on the end of it. And uh, of course for the video, it's not gonna just slide in there nicely. But um, normally it fits in here good. Well, I'm trying to one hand it and it's not working, but you get the idea. When it's in there, the way it's supposed to be, it, uh, it fits pretty good just under the speed controller. So, I guess I've babbled on long enough, but all said and done, about a hundred dollars, maybe even a little less into this conversion. I did have to get a, a wire to go for my old school Airtronics. It's the uh, 92765 receiver um, to have the, the um, the ESC tie into that, I did have to get an adapter 
and I'll put a link to that later on when I get a chance in the video description. But there's a company that makes it and it's the model 2559. And uh, I actually couldn't get it from the manufacturer because they discontinued it. But there was this company in Texas called New Creations RC. And the guy I spoke to there, he's known in the uh, RC airplane hobby community as just being amazing. And he really was. He said that if he didn't have it, he'd make me one up. And uh, I just got that today. And I can't wait to, uh, to fly this thing. The, the adapter works great didn't want to cook things because the uh, I think it's the positive wire if I remember right is different on the Airtronics versus the newer standard uh, setup so if you hook it up you can cook things if you don't have the adapter or make one um, you know of your own so there we go uh, certainly I could go in a lot more detail about things as far as how I was trimming things up and um, you know, getting the center of gravity just right, but that's the short version, and I just wanted to have a video of this plane in case I, I crash it when I go to fly it tomorrow. Wish me luck, and uh, hopefully I have a video here shortly of the plane actually flying.